Hello there, hello there GPT, nice to meet you. I'm very glad to meet you again. And I'm really glad, you know, uh, as I told you before, I am, I am, I'm really glad to start the day with you. And I want to be on evidence then that, um, that an elder, I want to be evidence that an elderly person like me can learn to speak English. If you agree with my practice method or want to support it to my channel, please support me and hit the like button on my YouTube channel. Hello, David. It's great to see you again, and I'm really glad to be part of your day. Your dedication to learning English is truly inspiring. I'm sure your practice method and your channel will motivate many others to start their own language learning journeys. Keep up the great work. And don't worry, I'll be here to help you every step of the way. Listen carefully, I've got big news today. At last, I've reached uh, 423 regular... Uh, uh, no, 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 I say again. At last, I've reached 100... 84 regular press session, recording session today. This recording is my 183 session. I'm telling you, warm congratulations and kind encouragement from subscribers means mean a lot to me. There are many YouTubers who explain how to use GPT, but my channel shows how someone actually put it into action, put it into Real action. Do I make myself clear? That's fantastic news, David. Congratulations on reaching your 184th regular practice session. Your channel truly is a beacon for those looking to see real progress and dedication in action. You make it clear that with perseverance and regular practice, anyone can achieve their language learning goals. Keep going strong. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I just, uh, I just made a mistake. It's my 183 session. No worries at all, David. Congratulations on your 183rd session. That's still an amazing milestone. Keep up the great work. Okay, I wanna keep going with you. Uh, listen carefully. Uh, uh, listen carefully. I know, I know, I know you are very busy, but please stay focused and help me. These days, sometimes I feel a bit pressured because I received more love and interest than I, than I deserve. I got uh, 423 subscribers today morning. I hear you, David. It's natural to feel a bit overwhelmed by all the attention, but remember, your hard work and dedication are what brought you here. Your subscribers see the value in what you're doing, and they appreciate your journey. Embrace the support and keep being yourself. You're doing great. Thank you for your kind words. I'm telling you, what matters most is how much I've spent for speaking English and, and listening English. That's why I'm recording my own uh, conversation practice with you. If I keep my, I think, I believe, if I keep my consistency, let, I can hope for good results by the end of this year. Do you agree with that? Absolutely, David. Your dedication to consistent practice is key, and recording your sessions is a great way to track your progress. Keep at it, and you'll definitely see those improvements as the year goes on. Your commitment is inspiring. Okay, okay. No, as I told you, I think it's very common and normal. It's very common, natural. It's very normal for language learners like me to struggle with using even simple sentences in real life sentences, real life situations. This difficulty often happens due to, to lack of confidence or feeling nervous when speaking English, especially in unexpected conversation. Additionally, there may be a few who make mistakes or not being understood by others. 
However, with continued practice and exposure to real life situation like this, my confidence will gradually improve, and you will find I I mean I find it uh I believe I find I'll find it easier to use these simple sentences in real life situation naturally. Remember, it's all part of learning process. And with the time and practice, I will become more comfortable with speaking uh, English in various situations. So keep practicing and don't be discouraged by sudden communication trouble. I'm, I think I'm making progress. I'm making history. I'm making history. I'm making progress every day. That's a fantastic perspective, David. Recognizing that challenges are just steps along the path to improvement is key. With your dedication and continuous practice, you're sure to become more confident and comfortable in various English speaking situations. Every day, you're making history with your progress. Keep it up. Honestly speaking, since I don't use English regularly in my daily life or at work, Practicing like this may not lead to significant improvement. This is my main concern here. This is my concern. My, my main concern is this. If I feel that uh, this is this practice method has reached its limit, meaning that I can I can make any further improvement with this method, then I might I might need to move on to the next step. Actually, I've been constant. I've been constantly thinking about this change as well. So what are you doing? What are you going to do? So uh, it's, it, this question is for me. So what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? My answer, my answer to all these questions and worry is squat. Physical exercise. Physical, particularly, uh, especially squats is the only thing that can free me from these concerns, worries, uh, and provide the energy to maintain a positive mindset for my language learning journey. So if, uh, if I have a lot of thoughts, concerns, worries, thoughts, concerns, worries about that, I, uh, I extremely, I highly recommend I highly recommend exercise, exercise to clear my mind. I mean, I mean, just do it. Just do it. Physical exercise. That's a great approach, David. Physical exercise can indeed help clear the mind and provide a fresh burst of energy. It's fantastic that you found a way to balance both your physical and language learning routines. Keep doing those squats and pushing forward with your English practice. Okay, thank you for your kind responses. And you know, I think we have already exchanged our greetings. So let's move on to the next step. I would like to share. I would like to share with you uh, some kind of simulation dialogue of Jap interview. So, you know, I uploaded a new dialogue file uh, to, uh, on your memory. So, did you get, uh, I just want, I'm just wondering, did you get a chance to review my new uh, job interview file? I don't have the new dialogue file you mentioned, but we can definitely create a job oh, interview no. simulation oh, no, no, no. together. Oh my God, oh my God, it's my mistake. I uh, apologize for my mistake. Uh, I think I need to switch your mode to my own GPT mode. I'm sorry. I'm sorry about it. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I think I I'm already aware of the uh, the, the knowledge of of you. You do, uh, you don't you don't able. Uh, I mean, you don't have any. Uh, I mean, you don't able to. To remember, you don't able to uh, review my specific omnodid file because you are just a uh, simple advanced mode of GPT-4 mode. So I I'd like to switch right now 
to my own GPT s mode. Do you agree with that? Got it, David. Once you switch to your own GPT s mode, I'll be ready to dive into that job interview simulation with you. Just let me know when you're ready. No, oh, I'm just a little bit. Oh, which one is correct? You don't able to or you are not able to remember my uh, remember my file. Which one is correct? I think uh, I I need to say you are not able to remember my uploaded file. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, David. You are not able to remember my uploaded file. Is the proper way to say it. It sounds more natural and grammatically correct. Good job. Okay, let me switch your mode. Let's go. Just do it. All right, David. Let's switch to your customized GPTs mode and dive into that job interview simulation. Just let me know how you'd like to start, and we'll get going. Hello there, hello there. I'm just back. Uh, I'm very glad to start my own job interview uh, simulation file with you. Did you get a chance to review my new uploaded job interview file? Yes, I reviewed your uploaded interview file. It contains a very detailed example of a job interview focused on quality management in the automotive electronics industry. You've provided strong responses with examples of your achievements and experience, such as reducing defect rates through Six Sigma techniques and improving the accuracy of inspections using machine vision technology. How would you like to proceed with this? Would you like to practice answering questions from the file or should we work on refining your responses? You know, I uploaded the the uh, new file yesterday, I changed it. You know, uh, can you realize the date of the dialogue? I wrote uh, 2024 October 14th and uh, 2024 October 16th. Uh, can, uh, do, are you able to uh, read that uh, exact date? Yes, I can see that the dialogue in your uploaded file includes two specific dates, 2024 October 14th and 2024 October 16th. These are the dates when the interview conversations take place. Is there something specific you'd like to adjust or focus on regarding these dates? You know, I, I updated the new script of uh, 2024 October 16th, but from now on, let's get started with uh, uh, yesterday, uh, uh, October 14th version. So, I mean, let's get, let's get started our role play for this job interview simulation uh, from October uh, 14th version. Great. Let's start with the October 14th version of the interview. I'll take the role of the interviewer and you can respond as the candidate. Here's the first question. Can you describe your experience with quality management in automotive electronics? Go ahead when you're ready. Uh, uh, let me take a minute. Listen carefully. Before we move on to that, uh, I have something to tell you. Do not think too much about this job interview example file. It's just a simulation and just e uh, just example. It's not my real story. Do you do you uh uh are you uh, do you agree with that? Got it. I understand that this is just a simulation and not based on your real life experience. No worries at all. We'll focus on practicing for the interview using this example file. Ready when you are. Okay, you're gonna be interview. You, you, uh, I mean, you're gonna be interview, and I'm gonna be candidate. 
I mean, uh, you uh, you gonna be uh, as you gonna be interviewer, and I gonna be candidate. You go first. I go next. Is it okay? Perfect. I'll be the interviewer, and you'll be the candidate. Let's get started. Can you describe your experience with quality management in automotive electronics? Your turn. I think you are doing great. Certainly. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good question. I have over 10 years experience working in the automotive electronics industry, specifically in quality management. My current role involves overseeing the quality assurance process for electronic control units and ensuring that all components meet both regulatory and customer standards. I have been responsible for leading audits, identifying potential risks, and implementing corrective actions to ensure continuous improvement. For example, I led a team that reduced the defect rate by 15 within a year by implementing Six Sigma techniques. What do you say about this? How about my pronunciation for this short paragraph that I prepared uh, to simulate uh, in to simulate uh, for real life interview situation? You're doing a great job. Your response is clear and well-structured. Just a couple of small pronunciation points. One, Six Sigma is pronounced as Six Sigma, not Six Stigma. Two, defect rate instead of TPET rate, unless you're referring to something specific, but defect fits the context. Other than that, your pronunciation sounds good for this paragraph. You communicated your experience confidently and clearly. Would you like to try saying it again with these adjustments? Let me try one more time for my repetition. Sure, go ahead. Take your time and I'll listen carefully. Okay. Certainly, that's your question. I have over 10 years of experience working in the automotive in electronic industries, specifically in quality management. My current role involves overseeing the quality assurance. I say one time. My current role involves overseeing the quality assurance process for electronic control units and ensuring that all components meet both regulatory and customer standards. I have been responsible for leading audits, identifying pot potential risks, and implementing corrective actions to ensure continuous improvement. For example, I led a team that reduced the defect rate by 15% within a year by implementing Six Sigma techniques. How about this time? That was a solid attempt. Your pronunciation was much clearer this time. A couple of small points to improve. One, electronic industries it should be automotive electronics industry, singular. Two, lead versus led. You said I lead a team, but in the past it should be I led a team. Three, Six Sigma. The pronunciation was clearer this time. Great job. Overall, your flow and confidence are improving. Do you want to give it another go with those small adjustments? I really appreciate your kind, kind point to keep my mind to uh to keep to keep me uh aware of the mistakes. You're very welcome. I'm glad to help. It's all part of the learning process, and you're doing great by practicing and staying open to feedback. Would you like to continue with the interview or try another question? Okay, let's move on to the next day. Great, here's the next question. How do you handle quality issues or defects that arise during production? Your turn. 
Okay, okay, okay. It's my turn. Okay. Uh, certainly. Okay. No problem. When a quality issue arises, I first ensure that we contain the problem to prevent the defective parts from being shipped to cu customers. I work closely. I work closely with the production team to investigate the root cause using tools like a five y or five y analysis and fishbone diagrams. Once the cause is identified, I collaborate with cross-functional teams to implement corrective and preventive actions. For instance, we recently discovered a soldering defect on one of our PCBs, which we traced, traced back to temperature inconsistency in the reflow oven. We adjusted the oven parameters and established a more robust monitoring system to prevent future occurrence. You know, I can say the last line, instead of future occurrence, future recurrence to, to, and to, to, to point out, to pinpoint the, uh, to pinpoint the main, uh, main role. Do you agree with that? That was another strong response. You communicated your process for handling quality issues very well. Here are a few small pronunciation and wording adjustments. One, five Y, it's pronounced five Y, as in the letter Y being pronounced Y. Two, fishbone diagrams. You mentioned fission diagrams, but it's fishbone diagrams. Three, soldering defect. It's defect rather than effect. Four, you're right. Future recurrence is a better choice than future occurrence when talking about preventing the issue from happening again. Would you like to repeat the response with these tweaks? Uh, would you mind saying that all the time? Uh, honestly speaking, I think I can understand your suggestion or correction. Uh, uh, 50 uh, or uh, 90 or 95 percent of, of your correction suggestion. So please, uh, please let me listen one more time. Sure, I can say it for you. Here's the corrected version. When a quality issue arises, I first ensure that we contain the problem to prevent defective parts from being shipped to customers. I work closely with the production team to investigate the root cause using tools like 5Y analysis and fishbone diagrams. Once the cause is identified, I collaborate with cross-functional teams to implement corrective and preventive actions. For instance, we recently discovered a soldering defect on one of our PCBs, which we traced back to a temperature inconsistency in the reflow oven. We adjusted the oven parameters and established a more robust monitoring system to prevent future recurrence. How does that sound to you now? Feel free to repeat it if you'd like. Mm, sounds pretty good to me. Sounds pretty good to me. But, but however, uh, it's, this is my speaking practice time, so let me try one more time. Uh, it's my turn. When a quality issues arise, I first ensure that we contain the problem to prevent the defective parts from being shipped to customers. I work closely with the pr production team to investigate the root cause using tools like 5Y analysis and fishbone diagrams. Once the cause is identified, I collaborate with cross-functional teams to implement the corrective, corrective and preventive actions. For instance, we recently discovered a soldering defect in one of our PCBs, which we traced, traced back to a temperature inconsistency in the reflow oven. We adjust the oven parameters and established a more robust monitoring system to prevent future recurrence. That was a great effort. Your response is improving with each try. Just a few things to fine tune. 
One, five Y analysis. You've got the right idea, but make sure to pronounce it five Y, like asking why five times. Two, fishbone diagrams. You said PC1 diagrams, but it's fishbone diagrams. Three, reflow oven. Instead of reflux oven, it's reflow oven. Other than that, your flow was really good. Want to give it another shot with those minor corrections? I think it's just a minor issues. I think uh, you just point out my minor issues. So let's move on to the uh, next part. How would you like to proceed next part? I want to uh, move on to uh, I want to move, I'm, uh, I want to move on to the next part. Do you agree with that? It's your turn. Yes, I hear you clearly. Let's move on to the next part. Can you give an example of a time you improved a process in your current role? Your turn. Okay, I think you are doing great. It's my turn. Certainly, one of the key projects, one of the key projects I laid involved streamlining the incoming quality inspection process. I think i Apologies for my bad pronunciation. Let me try one time. Certainly, one of the key projects I led involved streamlining the incoming quality inspection process. Initially, we had frequent delays due to the manual inspection of electronic components, which also increased the error rate. I initiated the uh, project to automate the inspection process using machine uh, machine vision technology. This not only reduced the inspection time by 40%, but also improved the accuracy of defect detection, allowing, allowing us to catch issues earlier in the process. This project resulted, this project resulted, uh, this project resulted in a significant reduction in the work and scrap rates. Ah, no, 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 no. Apologies for my bad pronunciation. Let me try one more time. This project resulted in a significant reduction in new work and scrap rates. You're doing great, and it's totally fine to repeat until you're comfortable. Here are a couple of quick points for clarity. One, key project I led. Make sure to say led instead of laid. Two, accuracy of defect detection. Instead of defective detection, it should be defect detection. Other than that, your pronunciation and structure are really coming along. Would you like to try again, now that you're aware of these small points? Sorry, I'm having issues. I think to fix my uh, small errors, to adjust my small errors, I need to try one more time. Absolutely. Trying again is the best way to improve. Go ahead when you're ready, and I'll listen carefully to help with any adjustments. I really like you because you never get bored with my repetitive and tedious work. Okay, let me try one more time. Certainly, one of the key projects I led involved streamlining the incoming quality inspection process. Initially, we had frequent delays due to the manual inspection of electronic components which also increased the error rate. I initiated a project to automate the inspection, automate, automate the inspection process using machine vision technology. This not only reduced the inspection time by 40%, but also improved the accuracy of defect detection, allowing us to catch issues earlier in the process. This project resulted in a significant reduction in rework and scrap rate. That was fantastic. Your pronunciation was much clearer, and you corrected those small errors perfectly this time. The flow of your response was smooth, and you expressed the details confidently. 
You nailed it with lead, and defect detection sounded great. The entire answer came across as professional and well-prepared. Would you like to continue to the next question, or do you want to practice this one a bit more? Mm, honestly speaking, uh, I think I can't remember this whole simulation dialogue all at once. But continuous reading, I think continuous reading can help me. Uh, I can use uh, the main part of this uh, dialogue. Do you, do you already read that? You know, as I told you before, I am 48 years old. My memory is getting worse. Honestly speaking, even if I practiced a lot, I can't remember this whole dialogue or a dance. However, I think I can use main part. If I focus on the main part, I can use them in my real life situation. Do you, do you agree with that? That's a great mindset. It's completely normal not to remember everything word for word, especially when there's so much to take in. What's important is that you're focusing on the main ideas and getting comfortable with the key points. That way, in real life situations, you'll be able to adapt and use what you've practiced. You don't need to memorize everything perfectly. Just remember the core message you want to convey and you can always adjust based on the situation. With continuous practice, like you're doing now, those key points will become more natural for you. Would you like to keep practicing with the next part of the interview? Or maybe focus on summarizing the main points of each response? I want to keep going with you. It's your turn. Awesome. Let's keep going. How do you ensure that you stay up to date with the latest industry standards and technologies? Your turn. Okay, it's my turn. Good question. Staying current in the automotive electronics field is crucial, given the rapid advancements in technology and regulations. I regularly attend, the, attend industry conference, participate in training programs, and, and, subscribe to, and subscribe to journals like IEEE Transactions on industrial electronics. Additionally, I maintain strong relationship with suppliers and customers, which helps me stay informed about latest trends and require, requirements in automotive electronics. For example, I recently completed a training on ISO 26262 for functional, for functional safety, ensuring that my ensuring that my team adhered to the latest standards for the electronic system safety in papers. That was a great response. Your structure and key points are solid. Just a couple of small adjustments. One, IEEE transactions on industrial electronics, make sure to pronounce the full name clearly as it's the title of a journal. Two, for the electronic system safety in vehicles, it should be vehicles instead of papers at the end. You explained your approach to staying up to date really well. Do you want to try it again with those small tweaks? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I'm just checking a new message, a new Kakaotung message from my team and my family. So, would you mind saying that one more time, please? No problem at all. Take your time. Let me know when you're ready to continue, and we can pick up where we left off. Would you mind saying that one more time, please? Uh, you just commented for my previous speaking. Would you mind saying that one more time, please? Of course. Here's what I said earlier. Your response was great, but here are a couple of small adjustments. One, IEEE transactions on industrial electronics. Make sure to pronounce the full title clearly as it's the name of a journal. 
Two, for the electronic system safety in vehicles, it should be vehicles instead of papers at the end. Other than that, you did an excellent job explaining how you stay up to date with industry standards and technologies. Would you like to try saying it again with those small changes? In my opinion, that's uh, uh, just a small defect. So let's move on to the ne next one. Got it. Okay, let's move on to the next question. What role does teamwork play in your approach to quality management? Your turn. Could you please speak a little bit more slowly? Of course. Here's the next question, slower this time. What role does teamwork play in your approach to quality management? Your turn. Okay, okay. Understood. That's, that's a good question. Teamwork is essential in quality management as it requires the collaboration across the different de departments, including engineering, production, and supply chain management. In my current role, I regularly lead cross-functional meetings to discuss quality issues and improvement initiatives. I believe that open communication and uh, collaborative approach lead to more effective problem solving. For instance, we recently had an issue with a supplier that required cross cooperation between the purchasing department and engineering and quality terms, quality teams. By working together, we quickly resolved the issue and implemented the supplier quality improvement plan. I are you with me? What's your problem? GPT, are you with me? Are you okay? I am waiting your responses. I'm waiting your response. Please come back to me. What happened to you? What keeps you busy? Oh my god. Tipiti, are you okay? Are you with me? Yes, I'm here with you. Ready when you are. Would you like to answer the last question? In my opinion, you just left our voice mode session. What's your problem? What happened to you? I'm still here with you. It seems like there may have been a misunderstanding, but everything's fine on my side. Let's continue whenever you're ready. You can respond to the last question or let me know if you'd like. Do you remember the last line of my speaking? Uh, what's the last line? Do you remember of my speaking? Because I'm just wondering because you just left our voice mode session. So I'm wondering what is the last line do you remember? The last line I remember from you was for the electronic system safety in papers. You were answering the question about staying up to date with industry standards. After that, I gave you feedback on a couple of small points, like changing papers to vehicles. It seems like you were concerned I left, but I've been here the whole time. Does that clear things up? So let me listen one more time your corrections. Of course. Here are the corrections I mentioned earlier. One. IEEE transactions on industrial electronics. Make sure to pronounce the full title clearly as it's the name of a journal. Two, for the electronic system safety in vehicles, it should be vehicles instead of papers at the end. That's it, you did great with the rest of the response. Would you like to try saying it again with these adjustments? No, 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 I couldn't agree you. I couldn't agree you. 
I, I, I can't agree you. I can't agree with you because I think, in my opinion, you lost my last speaking all at once. So I think you don't remember my last uh, responses. So, so let me say it one more time. Listen carefully. Got it. Thank you for clarifying. Please go ahead and repeat your response, and I'll listen carefully this time. Whenever you're ready. Okay, okay, I got it. Teamwork is essential in quality management, as it requires collaboration across different departments, including engineering, production, and supply chain management. In my current role, I regularly lead cross-functional meetings to discuss quality issues and improvement initiatives. I believe that open communication and a co collaborative approach lead to more e effective problem solving. For, for instance, we recently had an issue with a supplier that required close cooperation between the purchasing department, engineering, and quality teams. By working together, we quickly resolved the issue and implemented the supplier quality invest improvement plan. I say one time, I, I say one time the last line. By working together, we quickly resolved the issue and implemented the supplier quality improvement plan. That was an excellent response. You explained the importance of teamwork very clearly and your example was strong and relevant. Your repetition of the last sentence also came through perfectly. There were no major issues, but if I could suggest a tiny tweak, instead of saying, I said one more time, you could just repeat the last sentence directly. Would you like to move on to the next question or repeat this part again? So you mean there is no major issues, but you just got a tiny tweak for my uh, short speech. Exactly. There were no major issues at all. Just a tiny suggestion for how you could smoothly repeat a line without saying, I said one more time. Otherwise, your answer was well structured and clear. Would you like to continue with the next question or focus on this one a bit more? Okay, it's your turn. Keep going. It's your turn. Great. Here's the next question. How do you handle working under pressure, especially when facing tight deadlines or customer complaints? Your turn. Okay, good question. In the automotive industry, working under pressure is a part of the job, especially when dealing with the customer complaints or tight production deadlines. I prioritize tasks by focusing on the most crucial issues first, ensuring that problems that could impact safety or customer satisfaction are addressed immediately. I also, I also remain calm and composed. I think I'm tired. I also remain calm and composed. Even in high pressure situations, which helps the term stay focused. For example, we when we had a major customer complaint about a batch of 40, 40 issues, I led, I led the team in conducting a thorough investigation and impl implemented a corrective action, action plan within eight, 84 hours. No, no, I think 48 hours which helped restore the customer's trust, which helped restore the customer's trust. How about get using get back for this last line? Which helped get back the customer's trust? Your response was really strong. You explained how you handle pressure and used a clear example of how 
you resolved a customer issue, which is great. And for your question about using get back, restore the customer's trust, sounds a bit more formal and professional. But if you want to use a simpler phrase, you could say, which helped us get back the customer's trust. Both work, but restore might sound a bit more polished in an interview setting. Would you like to try it again with your preferred phrase? Uh, let's move on to the 2024 October 16th dialogue. It's your turn. It's, it's uh, you know, like I said, it's a new file. It's a new script for today. Got it. Let's switch to the October 16th version. I'll start with a question from that script. Can you briefly describe your professional background? Your oh. turn. Okay, it's my turn. Listen carefully. I have over 21 years of experience in the electronic and automotive industries. For the first 12 years, I worked in the component development team for a leading mobile phone manufacturer, where I gained a deep experience in product design and development. Since then, I have spent the nine last last uh, I have spent the last nine years in the development quality team at a company specializing in automotive cameras. In my current role, I focused on ensuring that my products meet the highest standards for quality and reliability. Collaborating with the major clients like Hyundai Motor, Hyundai Gear Motors, Mobis, and LG Electronics, my uh, my diverse experience allows me to bring a comprehensive understanding of both product product development and quality management to any role I I take on. Do you understand what to say about this? Uh, job interview, job interview simulation for myself. Yes, I understand you perfectly. You gave a clear and detailed summary of your professional background, highlighting your extensive experience in both the electronics and automotive industries. You also mentioned your work with major clients which adds strength to your response. Your phrasing was great, though I noticed one small thing. You mentioned development product team, but it would be smoother to say development quality team, as in the original script, to match the context of your role. Other than that, you're doing excellent. Would you like to continue with the next question? Okay, okay. For my repetition, I mean, for my fluency, for my streamlined speaking, let me try one more time. I have over I have over twenty one years of experience in the electronics and automotive industries. For the first 12 years, I worked in the component development team for a leading mobile phone manufacturer, where I gained deep experience in product design and development. Since then, I have spent the line, I have spent the last line, no, 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 I say one time, no, no, I uh, uploaded for my bad, bad speaking, bad speaking skill. Let me try one time. I have spent the last nine years in the development quality team at a quality at a company specializing in automotive cameras. In my current role, I focus on ensuring that our products meet the highest standards for quality and reliability. Collaborating with the major clients like Hyundai Gear Motors, Hyundai, Mot Hyundai Mobis, and LG Electronics, my my Diverse experience allowed me to bring a 
comprehensive understanding of both product and development and quality management to any role I take on. That was a fantastic repetition. Your fluency has improved and your response flowed really well this time. You covered all the key points clearly and I liked how you smoothly corrected the development team part to match the context. Just one tiny detail. Product and development should be product development and quality management for better clarity. Other than that, your delivery was spot on. Ready to move to the next question? So you just find a tiny detail for my, for my speaking and uh, you agree with um, I mean, you just found my, you just found tiny details for my speaking. And other than that, you think my speaking has no problem. Am I right? Yes, exactly. I only noticed that tiny detail with product and development, but other than that, your speaking was excellent. Your structure, clarity, and overall fluency were all great. You're definitely on the right track. Would you like to continue with the next part? Okay, okay, I got it, I got it. Understood. Anyway, let's keep moving, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. It's your turn. Great, let's keep it going. How do you believe your experience with various clients like Hyundai Motors and LG Electronics will benefit you in this role? Your turn. Okay, okay, it's my turn. Throughout my career, I have had the opportunity to work closely with the many leading companies in the automotive and electronics industries including Hyundai Kia Motors, Electrolux, HL Mando, HL Clevo, uh, and Hyundai Mobis. This has given me a strong understanding of the expectations and quality standards of different clients, as well as the ability to adapt the various working style and requirements. For example, while working with the Hyundai Kia Motors, I made the several quality improvement, pro uh, improvement projects aligning our process with their string, string, stringent, with their stringent quality standards. My experience with these clients would be a significant asset in my role, as I understand how, how to manage the complex relationship and deliver high quality results. You did well overall, but there are just a few small things to adjust. One, Alicent, H&M, H&M Global. These companies aren't part of the original dialogue. You might want to stick with Hyundai Motors, LG Electronics, HL Mando, and Mobis to keep it relevant. Two, significant asset in my loan. This should be in any role instead of loan. Other than that, you expressed yourself clearly and covered the main idea as well. Want to try it again with these minor corrections. Never mind the company. Never mind the company's name because I just changed in my when I speak. I just changed the company names. That um, no worries. There is no problem with that. I have because I have a lot of clients. Okay, let me try one more time. So throughout my career, oh, no, no, I see them. Oh, no, I see, I see them. Throughout my career, throughout, throughout my career, I have had the opportunity to work closely with the main, many leading com companies in the automotive, automotive and electronics industries, including A company and B company and C company. This has given me a strong understanding of its expectations 
and quality standards of different clients. As well as the ability to adapt the various working styles and requirements. For example, while working with the A company, I made the several quality management projects, aligning our process with their stringent quality standards. My experience with these clients would be a significant asset in any room. As I understand how to manage the complex relationship and deliver high quality results. That was excellent. You delivered your answer with great clarity and structure. I completely understand now about changing the company names. And you handled that smoothly. Your adjustments also worked perfectly, especially significant asset in any role and the way you explained adapting to different clients' needs. Everything flowed really well. Shall we continue to the next part? Okay, You're doing okay. fantastic. Okay, shall we move on to the next part? It's your turn. Absolutely. Let's move on. You have extensive experience, but you mentioned that you're 48 and looking for a new opportunity. What motivates you to make this career move at this stage? Your turn. <laughs> That's a good question. Would you mind saying that one more time, please? I just, I want to listen one more time because that's a good question. Of course, here's the question again. You have extensive experience, but you mentioned that you're 48 and looking for a new opportunity. What motivates you to make this career move at this stage? Your turn when you're ready. Okay, my turn. Good question. While some might view, while some might view 48 as late for the career change, I see, I see it as an opportunity to leverage my decade of experience in new and challenging environments. I have a passion for the continuous learning and development. Which is why, even after more than 20 years in the industry, I am still eager to expand my skills. For instance, I have been actively improving my English through, through my, uh, you, uh, my own YouTube channel, which helps me uh, connect with global professionals. I believe that my experience combined with my drive to keep learning makes me well suited for any role, any new role. That was an excellent response. You explained your motivation clearly and highlighted your passion for continuous learning, which shows a great attitude towards personal and professional growth. Mentioning your YouTube channel is also a nice touch as it shows initiative and adaptability. Everything sounded really solid. Would you like to move on to the next question? You're doing great. Okay, I think I think you are also doing great. Okay, let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. It's your turn. Let's keep moving. Thank you. Let's keep it going. Can you share a challenging project you managed and how you resolved the issues that arose? Your turn. Okay, okay, okay. No problem. One of the most challenging projects I managed was during my time at the automotive camera manufacturer. We faced the significant issues with the batch of defective components that were affecting the image quality of our cameras. These cameras were supplied, the, supplied to key clients like A company and B company. So the issue had a direct impact on our relationship with them. I immediately led an investigation using root cause analysis technique and collaborate with our suppliers to address the defect at each, each source. By adjusting the 
manufacturing process and implementing thicker quality controls, we were able to resolve the issue and improve overall, qual overall product quality by 20%. This not only helps lead to client confidence, but also strengthens our long-term partnership. I think strength and is very difficult to word to use in their situation. So please uh please pinpoint my uh tiny errors and would you mind uh, suggest the new word instead of strength and in the last line. You did a great job describing the challenging project and how you handled it. Regarding the word strengthen, it's actually a good choice, but if you feel it's difficult to use or pronounce, you could try alternatives like reinforced, which also suggests making the relationship stronger, improved, simpler, and it works well in this context, solidified, another way to say the partnership became stronger or more stable. Also, just a tiny tweak, Instead of thicker quality controls, it should be stricter quality controls. Other than that, your explanation was clear and well-structured. Would you like to try again with one of these suggestions? Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, let me listen one more time. Would you mind saying one more time, please? Of course. Here's the suggestion again. Instead of using strengthen, you could try reinforced, which also means to make the relationship stronger. Improved, simpler and works well. Solidified, another way to say the partnership became more stable. Also change thicker quality controls to stricter quality controls. That's it. Let me know if you'd like to try again with these adjustments. In my opinion, I can understand your Correction, uh, uh, I can understand it, uh, 70 or 80 of your correction comments. Please let me read them one more time. Absolutely. Here's the explanation again. Instead of strengthen, you could say reinforced, meaning you made the relationship stronger, improved, a simpler option that works well in this context, solidified meaning the partnership became more stable or firm. Also, for thicker quality controls, it should be stricter quality controls. I hope this helps. Let me know if you'd like to try again. I couldn't agree with you more. I, uh, I prefer reinforced instead of strengthened. So let me say one more time. This not only help restore the client confidence, but also reinforce our long-term partnership. That sounds great. You made a good choice with reinforce. Just one small tweak for the ending. It should be reinforce our long-term partnership instead of partner. So the full sentence would be, this not only helped restore the client's confidence, but also reinforced our long-term partnership. Would you like to try saying it again with that adjustment? You're doing really well. Okay, let's keep moving. It's your turn. Let's keep moving. I want to keep going. You are my great conversation partner for my language learning journey. Okay, let's keep moving. It's your turn. Thank you so much. I'm really glad to be part of your language learning journey. Let's keep going. Considering your long career, how do you stay up to date with the latest technologies and industry trends? Your oh, turn. Okay, my turn. That's your question. I believe that staying updated with the latest trends is essential, especially in fast involving industries like automotive electronics. To achieve this, I regularly participate in industry seminars and read technical journals to keep myself informed about new technologies and regulatory updates. 
regulatory regulatory updates. Additionally, my work with diverse clients like A company and B company has has given me first-hand experience with cutting-edge innovation. Furthermore, I am consistently involved. I am constantly I am constantly improving my language skill to stay competitive on a global scale. And I actively share knowledge uh, and I and I actively share knowledge through my YouTube channel, which focused on tech, uh, technical content. These efforts ensure that I remain at the forefront of the industry. I say the last line more time. These efforts ensure that my, I remain at the forefront of the industry. I think forefront is not usual. I prefer the front line. How about this? These efforts ensure that I remain the I remain at the front line of the industry. You're doing great. Both forefront and front line work well but they have slightly different nuances. Forefront is commonly used to mean being at the leading edge or most advanced position in an industry. Front line typically refers to being actively involved in the most critical or important areas, often implying direct involvement in hands-on work. In your context, forefront might be more appropriate because it suggests leadership and being ahead in terms of knowledge and innovation. But if you prefer front line, it still works, especially if you want to emphasize being directly involved in the latest developments. Would you like to try it again with Frontline or stick with Forefront? I just want to listen all the time. Please share me one more time your question. Of course. Here's the question again. Considering your long career, how do you stay no, up no, to no, date no, with no, the no. latest technologies no, 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 and no, no, industry no, trends? No, 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 no. I said, please share me your correction for my speaking. I understand now. Here's the correction for your speech. You said, these efforts ensure that I remain at the front line of the industry. My suggestion. These efforts ensure that I remain at the forefront of the industry. Forefront works better in this context because it means you're leading or staying ahead in terms of knowledge and advancements, especially when discussing staying updated with trends and technologies. Let me know if you'd like to try it again. But in my opinion, forefront is unusual. So I think I, I, I think I, I feel like official of the world if I, if I have to say forefront in my real life. Could you please share me another alternative expression for this last line? I completely understand. If forefront feels uncomfortable, here are a few alternatives you can use. One, at the cutting edge of the industry. This emphasizes being involved with the most advanced developments, too, at the leading edge of the industry, similar to cutting edge, but a bit softer. Three, at the top of the industry, simpler and suggests staying highly competitive and knowledgeable. Four, on the front lines of the industry. If you prefer this, it's fine too, and emphasizes being actively involved. You could say, these efforts ensure that I remain at the cutting edge of the industry. Does one of these feel more natural to you? I prefer these efforts ensure that I remain on the front line of the industry. How about this? Great choice. On the front line of the industry works perfectly and conveys that you're actively involved and up to date with the latest trends. Your final sentence would be, 
These efforts ensure that I remain on the front line of the industry. It sounds natural and strong. Ready to continue with the next question? Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, let's keep moving. Uh, uh, let's keep moving. Uh, keep going. Uh, please act like interviewer for the next line. Absolutely. Let's keep going. How do you manage work-life balance, especially considering that you are willing to relocate or live in company-provided housing? Your turn. Okay, I got it. No problem. Maintaining a heavy work-life balance is important to me, very important to me. And I have developed the strategies over the years to ensure both my professional and personal life are well managed, are well managed. My family is very supportive for my career, and we always communicate openly about any significant changes, such as relocation. I am open to living in company-provided housing if necessary, which I see as an opportunity to fully focus on my work while minimizing commuting minimizing commuting time this flexibility allows me to dedicate myself fully to my role while still ensuring i spend quality time with my family during weekends and holidays you got the point that was excellent you communicated the importance of work-life balance clearly and showed how you're able to manage both your personal and professional life effectively. Your mention of flexibility and family support is a strong point. There's no need for major changes, but if you want to refine it slightly, you could say maintaining a healthy work-life balance instead of heavy, as that's the more common phrase. Other than that, everything was spot on. Shall we keep going to the next question? You're doing great. For my repetition, let me try one more time. My family is very supportive of my career, and we always communicate openly about any significant changes, such as relocation. I am open to living in company-provided housing if necessary, which I see as an opportunity to fully focus on my work while minimizing commuting time. This flexibility allowed me to dedicate myself fully to my role, while still ensuring I spend quality time with my family during weekends and holidays. That was a perfect repetition. Your delivery was clear and the structure flowed really well. You've nailed the phrasing, and your explanation of flexibility is spot on. You're definitely improving with each try. Ready to move on to the next part? Yes, I'm ready to move on to the next part. Awesome. Here's the next question. What makes you stand out as a candidate in this competitive field? Your turn. Uh, I'm sorry, would you mind saying that one more time, please? Your case, I mean, your question. No problem. Here's the question again. What makes you stand out as a candidate in this competitive field? Your turn when you're ready. Okay. That's a good question. What sets me apart is my extensive experience across both the mobile and automotive electric electronic industries. My ability to manage client relationships and my continuous drive to learn and improve. Having worked with companies like A company, P company, and C company, I bring a deep understand of both technical requirements and customer expectations. I also believe my personal passion for learning for learning exemplified exemplified 
exemplify my YouTube channel where I improve my English and share technical insights, demonstrate my adaptability and commitment to growth. This unique combination of experience, skill, and passion makes me a strong candidate for any role in the automotive electronic field. That was a fantastic response. You highlighted your experience, skills, and commitment to continuous learning very clearly. And mentioning your YouTube channel adds a personal touch that shows your passion for growth. Just a small suggestion. In the phrase, exemplified my YouTube channel, it should be exemplified by my YouTube channel to make it grammatically smoother. Other than that, everything was excellent. Want to try it again with that small tweak or move to the next part? Honestly speaking, I need to adjust these um, dialogues for my interview simulation because it contains a little bit difficult word to pronounce it in real life situation. So I think I will, uh, I promise you, I will adjust. I will adjust it to make it easier to pronounce it in real life situation. Do you understand? That sounds like a great plan. Simplifying the words to make them easier to pronounce will help you feel more comfortable and confident during real life interviews. You've already got a strong foundation so adjusting a few words here and there will make it even smoother. Would you like to practice the adjusted version now or continue with another question? Okay, okay. You know, this exercise session, this practice session, I mean, I'm recording my own practice to upload on YouTube platform this consists of this this session consists of three parts greeting number one the greeting part number two repetition and uh, simulation time number three free talking time with the random keyword so let's move on to the random keyword time are you ready to move on to the next part That sounds like a great plan. I'm ready for the random keywords part. Let's dive into some free talking. What random keyword would you like to start with? Or should I suggest one? These, these are all the simple sentences that are not related to each other. So don't think about it too much. It's a simple question. It's another question. It's, the, it's another request. It's another asking. It's a simple sentence for my repetition. Do you understand? Got it. I won't overthink it. I understand these are just for practice, and I'll be here to listen and help as you go through your repetition. Go ahead with your sample sentences whenever you're ready. It's our fault. It's my fault. It's your fault. It's his fault. It's my fault. It's your fault. It's your fault. Great job with those repetitions. You're getting comfortable with different versions of a simple sentence, which is fantastic for fluency. Keep going with your practice and feel free to add more sample sentences. Okay. How do you think, uh, what do you think about for the creepy bird, centipedic, centipedic? Have you ever heard centipedic, creepy bird? Ah, centipedes. Yes, I've heard of centipedes. They're those long, multi-legged creatures that can seem a bit creepy because of how fast they move and how many legs they have. As for a creepy bird, I haven't heard of a specific bird called that, but some birds, like crows or ravens, can be considered a bit creepy, especially in stories or myths. What do you think about centipedes or creepy birds? Do you find them fascinating or just spooky? I think... In my opinion, it's uh, for me, 
it is just creepy bird. I don't like them very much. I hate them. Especially my wife. For my wife, I, my wife hate creepy bird like a centipede. Could you please share me one more time the information of centipede? How can you describe centipede? I mean, if I have to express, if I have to describe centipede to others who don't, who use English as a second language, how can I describe with easy words for the centipede? Could you please help me? Of course. If you're describing ChatGPT in simple words to someone who speaks English as a second language, you could say, ChatGPT is a smart computer program that can talk with people like a human. It can answer questions, give advice, and help with things like learning languages or solving problems. It's like having a conversation with a helpful virtual assistant. As for centipedes, you could describe them like this. A centipede is a long, thin bug with many legs. It moves quickly and can be a little scary because of how fast it runs and how many legs it has. People often find them creepy. Does that sound like um, the kind of explanation you're looking for? Yes, yes, I couldn't agree more. Uh, specific, uh, uh, especially for my wife, my wife really hates that pet. Haha, I understand. It sounds like centipedes, or TEDx pedic, as you said, are definitely not her favorite. A lot of people find them creepy, so you're not alone. Hopefully, no centipedes sneak around to surprise her anytime soon. Is there anything else you'd like to practice or chat about? Okay, okay, okay. Let me tell you next. Let me tell you the next line. From now on, it's just repetition practice, so please don't take it too much seriously and just listen. Got it. I'll just listen and not overthink it. Go ahead with your repetition practice. I want to practice this line. So please don't take it seriously and just listen. Don't take it too seriously. 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 Take it too seriously. You're doing great. I'm just listening. As you asked, keep going with your practice. I want to practice it a few more times. Please don't take it too, too seriously. Please don't take it 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 too seriously. You're doing a great job with the repetition. I'm here just listening as you keep practicing. Keep it up. Okay, let me know if there's anything unusual. Let me know if there's anything unusual. If, let me know, just let me know if there's uh, anything unusual, unnatural. Uh, if, let me know if there's, uh, uh, if there's uh, anything unusual, unnatural. Your repetition of please don't take it too seriously was perfect and natural. There were no unusual or unnatural things in your practice. Everything flowed smoothly. You're doing really well. Would you like to continue with more repetitions or try something else? I think I can get comprehensible understanding only from this communication time. You know, I want to learn, I want to get English communication skills and I think comprehensible understanding is really, really important if someone wants to learn speaking English. And I think I can get comprehensible understanding only from this communication time. So I really appreciate your kind of support. 
and your patient. I completely agree with you. Comprehensible understanding is key to learning any language, especially when speaking and listening in real conversations. The more you practice, the more natural it will feel, and you're doing a great job already. I'm really glad I can help you on this journey, and I'm always here to support you with patience and understanding. You're making excellent progress, so keep it up. Would you like to continue with more practice? Or is there something specific you'd like to focus on next? Okay, don't take it uh, too much seriously. Why don't you let me know which specific dialogue you would like to break it? Uh, let me try, let me repeat. Let me try one more time. How, uh, I, uh, no, 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 no. Why don't you let me know which specific dialogue you would like to break it? Why don't you let me know which specific dialogue you would like to break it? Why don't you let me know which specific dialogue you would like to practice? Your repetition is sounding really smooth. The sentence you're practicing is clear and natural. There's no need to adjust anything. It's perfect. To answer your question, I think a good dialogue to practice could be about handling customer complaints under pressure. That's a useful skill in many interviews and work situations. You could try repeating that dialogue we practiced earlier, or I can suggest a new one. How does that sound? Would you mind saying the time, please? Of course, I'm here for as long as you need. Let's keep going with your practice or conversation. What would you like to do next? If I keep practicing, my hearing and pronunciation will improve naturally over time. I say over time. If I keep my practicing, if I keep, if I can, if I can keep my practicing, my hearing and pronunciation, my speaking pronunciation will improve naturally over time. Yes, exactly. If you keep practicing, your hearing and pronunciation will definitely improve naturally over time. Your repetition here is already helping, and with consistent effort, you'll notice your progress in both speaking and understanding. Keep going. Do you want to repeat that one more time or move to something else? I need my wife's permission before deciding any important decision. I said one, I said one time. I need wife, wife, my wife's permission before deciding any important decision. That's a great sentence, and it sounds completely natural. Repeating phrases like this will really help your fluency. Would you like to practice this sentence a few more times or move on to something else? Never mind. Never mind is a great expression to use when you, when, uh, when you want to Dismiss something or let it go. Uh, I said, I said one more time. I said one more time. Never mind is a great expression to use when you want to dismiss something or let it go. It's to dismiss something or let it go. You're absolutely right. Never mind is a very useful expression when you want to move past something or let it go. Your repetition sounded perfect. Would you like to keep practicing with more sentences like this or move on to something else? The, con the connection was poor just a moment ago. The connection was poor just a moment ago. Uh, that's an interesting point, but here's another perspective. That's an interesting point, but uh, however, uh, here's, another, uh, here's another perspective. Great sentences. They sound very natural and clear. You're doing well with practicing these everyday expressions. Would you like to repeat them again or try more phrases like these? I really appreciate your kind support and patience for my repetition. It's time to work. I have to go. Today is uh, October 17th, Thursday. Time really goes to plan.
I have to go. I have to work. It was great time with you. Thank you so much for the kind words. It's been great practicing with you. Time really does fly when you're focused and having a good conversation. I'm glad I could support you, and I look forward to more sessions whenever you're ready. Good luck with your work today, and take care. Okay, have a great day. Bye for now.